The combination of bad lineups, poor execution, and DeMar DeRozan just completely taking over in the second half, bury the Raptors 105-104. This is the Airborne Podcast. I'm your host, Ajith, and that's two games out of the last three where Toronto had a double-digit lead, but they could not hold it, hold on to it, and win the game. It was bittersweet because we had another, you know, video for for DeMar, another tribute video, which we're probably going to do every time he comes back. As long as he's in the Western Conference, it's only once a year that he comes back to Toronto. So that was nice to see. And Kyle Lowry had a little cute moment with his son when he fell down and he got up and kissed him. And then you got Pascal Siakam and Norman Powell coming back. And... Um, they're probably on going to be on a minutes li- uh, limitation for a bit. But they look good in the first half. They both look like they did not miss a beat. They've been they they look like they've been playing the whole time. It didn't even seem like they were coming back from an injury. It's been, it feels like a long time but it's only been 11 games. That first quarter though, in that first quarter, the Raptors Raptors went on a 10 10-0 run. It was a 16-4 run altogether. And, you know, everything was looking good. The offense looked like it was clean. Pascal scored, like, 12 points in seven minutes. Norman Powell's three-point shot looked like he never missed a beat. And um, the one weir- weird thing that happened in that first quarter was DeRozan. I don't know if it was the jitters or whatever it was, but he missed three straight free throws, which is not very characteristic of him to do. That's very rare to see. But, um, yeah, they go on that 10-0 run, 16-4 run altogether. And then the Spurs respond with the 8-0 run on their own. Cut the lead to 4. Uh, 23-19. And then Raptors basically go ice cold for 5 minutes and can't score. That happened in the first quarter. It happened in the fourth quarter. Second quarter, the Raptors, same thing. It was a, it was a bunch of runs. Raptors going 11-2 run. Spurs come back, hit them with the 12-3 run. And at halftime, you know, it was it was looking good. The Raptors looked like they were, you know, they were on pace to have a blowout win. And in the third quarter, you had Greg Popovich call back to back timeouts because Norman Powell came back, I think, and hit back to back threes. I know as soon as he hit a three, Greg Popovich called the second timeout timeout. And it was a 9-0 Raptors run in that third quarter. And we were up, uh, were we up 18? I know we were up as high as 18. And then fourth quarter, holy hell. Um, <laughs> the Raptors give up a 17-0 run to the San Antonio Spurs. And they can't score. They literally couldn't score for like six minutes in that fourth quarter. The free throw differential, I'm going to get into that too. I felt like they had like three times more free throw attempts than we did. Um, and the Spurs, you know, they, they they got life. They found life. You know, they felt that comeback coming and they just kept executing. And they went on a 27-9 run in that fourth quarter. And then the Raptors, when you think they can't buy a bucket for their life, they somehow come back, hit three straight threes. One first with Kyle Lowry, then Norman Powell, and then Serge Ibaka. The ball movement on those back-to-back-to-back possessions was absolutely incredible. And, you know, they were they tied the game at 100. It felt like, ah, uh, shit, we're going to, you know, we're going to pull this one through. And it felt something similar to that Dallas game where we came back and won it. But then Pascal Siakam, he misses a free throw. He misses one out of two free throws, and he only puts us up by one. It was actually a 10-0 run, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a 10-0 run. Yeah, it was a 10-0 run that we had against them in the final few minutes of the game. He misses a free throw. Then Bellinelli comes back, and if you're going to keep giving him that shot, he's not going to miss too many times. He missed two before that, but when it mattered most, he made that shot with, like, I think 28 seconds left. He made... um, he made a three, and they were up 103-101. Uh, 
Then Pascal, he has DeRozan one on one. He does his, you know, his signature move, his spin move, but he can't make the ba- he can't make the basket. He messes it up. He misses it. DeRozan gets the rebound, I think, and then someone fouls him. He goes up, banks two free throws. He swishes two free throws, and then they're up by four. And then Larry comes. He gives us life. He hits a three. He hits a three, gets us down by one. Yeah, he puts us down by one, so it's 105-104. And then LaMarcus gets fouled. Thank God OG was able to stop him before he got the three-point play because he missed both free throws. And Pascal runs up with the ball with like four seconds left. But instead of passing into the open man, he wanted to be the hero to make up for the missed free throw and the missed layup when he had Kyle Lowry to his left fully open and he had Norman Powell fully open on the right. And Lowry just hit the three before that, so why wouldn't you give the ball back? And I know in those pressure situations, sometimes you're not thinking well. And you just got to go with your gut and shoot the ball so you know that you can at least get a shot off with the time running down. But they were both really open. They had enough time to get that shot off. But unfortunately, it didn't go that way and the Raptors lost. And like I said, this is the second game in three games that they gave up a lead. And Portland, just not too long ago, you know, Carmelo, they went on a run. They got back in the game. He hits the game winner for them. Larry had an opportunity to tie that, I mean, win that game, but missed the three. It is what it is. You know, they're going to, we're going to have these moments for a bit where we're having everyone come back in the lineup. Marcus All, Marcus All should be back soon. At least that's from, that's what was heard. That's what was said. Um, no one expected Pascal to come back tonight. Like, that was just like literally an hour before the game started. They said Pascal was good to go. And uh, he came back in the lineup, and I told you, like, if you guys were watching the game, he looked really good in that first quarter. But it was the second half that kind of bit him in the ba- in the behind. But, yeah, he was missing typical shots that he usually makes. And, unfortunately, that did not work out for him today. But, you know, we'll bounce back. We had some time for practice and stuff, so, you know, they had enough rest to win this game. I, I thought they were going to win it, but... DeRozan had other ideas, and he came back. He baptized Chris Boucher a day after his birthday, and he gave him the little stare down, got a technical for it. All these former Raptors were just trying to have a dunk contest at one point in that fourth quarter or in that third quarter because, you know, DeRozan had that first one, then he had another dunk, but that wasn't on anybody. And then Rudy Gay posterizes Rondé Hollis Jefferson. And his former Raptors is taking out their frustration for trading them. There was like five former Raptors on that team. DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, Marco Bellinelli, Jakob Perto, and Damari Carroll. You might have not noticed Damari Carroll because he did not play a single minute. But every other former Raptor did. And in some way, shape, and form... They did their part to win this ball game. I'm going to get into the full stats of the team, individual stats and the team t- team stats. But, yeah, we were killing them throughout the whole game. That's the saddest part about this loss. That's what's the most frustrating because, like, it didn't feel like the, the, the Spurs had any chance of getting this game. And then all of a sudden they sneak into that fourth quarter, go on that 17-0 run. And they somehow win the game. And they've, they're they doing really good right now. They're fighting for the eighth seed. And they beat the Celtics, the Bucks, and the Raptors all this week. So they were coming on like a little, you know, on a little momentum thing. Where they were just feeling confident like they could, like they could beat any team. And they beat three out of the top six teams in the East in one week. In that first quarter, though, we outscored them by 7, 28, 21. Second quarter... We outscored them by one point, 23-22. And the third quarter, we outscored them 31-26. And that fourth quarter is where they killed us, 36-22. to that, that serious drought that we had where we couldn't score for like six minutes really killed us. That's what, that, that was a game changer for us to lose that game. 
Field goal percentage for the Raptors, they were 39 and 96 from the field, 41%. The Spurs were 44%, and they were 38 of 87 from the field. Three pointers, we were 17 of 48, 35%. They were 7 of 32 for 22%. We got 12 plus threes tonight, so everybody go get your French fries. If that even matters to you. Because obviously without a Raptors win, the fries do not taste the same. Free throws. We were 9 of 11 for 82%. One of those misses came at the crucial time when we needed as many points on the board to win the game. But Pascal missed it. And... The Spurs were 22 of 30. Wow. So we got 11 free throw attempts and they had 30. That shows you... I remember Matt Devlin or Leo Routens, one of them were saying something about how like the free throw difference was absolutely atrocious. Like It was a big difference. And at that point, it didn't matter because the Raptors were up and no one really cared because we were winning. But then now looking back at it, I mean, there's a big reason to why... Well, we didn't get no calls. We did. We barely got calls. And the free throw disparity shows that. Rebounds. They all rebounded us 51 to 45. Offensive rebounds. They beat us 9 to 8. Assists. We were we were really good tonight. 30 assists. They had 24. Steals. We were 7 to 6. Blocks. They were 5 to 3. In the Spurs' favor. Turnovers. We've been taking care of the ball. I've been saying this so many times. We only have 11 turnovers tonight. Same with the Spurs. Personal fouls, we had 23, they had 11. Technicals, DeRozan got that one technical for staring down Boucher after the dunk. We had none. And he was really getting calls at the end. Like in that fourth quarter, DeRozan was really aggressive and the refs were giving him the calls because, you know, that's what he does. You remember how those plays and how he drew fouls on the Raptors before. So, like, you knew he was going to do the same thing when he, you know, on any other team. That's just his go-to move. He pump fakes like 17 times, and if you don't jump, he pretends to fall down to act like he got fouled. He's probably like the second best to draw fouls, aside from Harden, maybe. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section if you disagree, and if you have another player that draws better fouls or more fouls, let me know. Stats, individual stats. Let's start with the winning team, the Spurs. LaMarcus Aldridge, 34 minutes, only had 11 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 of 10 from the field, 1 of 3 from the free throw line, 2 of 6 from the 3-point line with a steal and a turnover. DeMar DeRozan, 35 minutes, 25 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 7 of 12 from the field, 11 of 14 from the free throw line, and no 3-point attempts with 2 steals, 2 turnovers. Him alone, he had 14, three, uh, 14 free throws alone and the Raptors only had 11 and he made all his free throws after those first three misses he never missed again from the free throw line Trey Lyles Saskatchewan Swahili times Saskatchewan's very own 14 minutes he was a starting center for them tonight but did not really do anything in his uh, you know his return to Canada he had four points five rebounds no assists two of five from the field And nothing else. Brian Forbes. Is his name Brian or Brent? It's Brian. 20 20 minutes, 7 points, assist, a rebound. 3 of 10 from the field. No free throw attempts. 1 of 6 from 3 with 1 turnover. DeJounte Murray, 21 minutes, 10 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. 5 of 9 from the field. No free throw attempts. He has a 3 point. He had a 3 point attempt, but he missed it. And he had 1 turnover. Patty Mills, 28 minutes, 9 points, 4 rebounds, no assists, 3 of 12 from the field, 2 of 3 from the free throw line, 1 of 7 from the 3-point line with 1 steal, 1 turnover. And then Derek White, 27 minutes, he was pretty big in that fourth quarter. With 13 minutes, sorry, 27 minutes, 13 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 5 of 9 from the field, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, 0 of 3 from the 3-point line with 3 blocks, no steals, 1 turnover. Jakob Perto, former Raptor, 20 minutes, 4 points, 10 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 of 3 from the field, no free throw attempts, no 3-point attempts, and no steals, 2 blocks, 2 turnovers. 
Rudy Gay, 20 minutes, 15 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, 4 of 9 from the field, 5 of 6 from the free throw line, 2 of 5 from the three-point line, and he had that memorable dunk on DeJounte, I mean, on, on Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Marco Bellinelli, in 12 minutes, he had a big three, five points, four rebounds, three assists, two of four from the field, no free throw attempts, one of three from the three-point line, and one steal, no turnovers. Lonnie Walker, only other player to get minutes. Last player, he had 11, points, 11 minutes, two points, two rebounds. One of those rebounds were very crucial for, for them. Um, and he had one, he was one of four from the field, no free throw attempts, one three-point attempt, but he missed. And he had a steal and a turnover. Raptors. A lot of Raptors are good tonight. Four Raptors actually in double figures. Four out of the five starters. But OG Ananobi in 29 minutes was the only one that did not have double digit points. Uh, he had eight points, three rebounds, two assists in 29 minutes with three, three of five from the field, one on one from the free throw line, one on one from the three point line with a steal. And Siakam, 30 minutes, 15 points. Five rebounds, four assists, six of seventeen from the Yeah, from the field. Six of seventeen from the field, one or two from the free throw line, two of six from the three point line with the turnover. And after that first quarter, he was pretty non existent. Like he had that free throw. He had that free throw in the fourth quarter. So he only scored like two points from basically the first after the first quarter. Only two points. Ibaka he had a career high in eight consecutive double doubles. Uh, he had 30, in 32 minutes. He had 21 points, 14 rebounds, one assist, nine of 16 from the field, no free throw attempts, three of six from three, with one block and one turnover. He was huge tonight. He was hitting big shots, time after time after time. Kyle Lowry, 39 in 39 minutes. He had 16 points, three rebounds, 15 assists, five of 15 from the field. 2 of 2 from the free throw line, 4 of 12 from the three-point line, 2 steals, 2 turnovers. And Ibaka played 32 minutes, Larry played 39, and he played the most minutes again. Norman Powell, 31 minutes, 20 points, 3 re- <laughs> twenty points, three rebounds, 4 assists, 8 of 14 from the field, no free throw attempts, 4 of 7 from 3. He was really shooting it tonight. He had 1 steal, 4 of 7 from the field. And he had one steal, one turnover. But like I said, he was really shooting the ball tonight. His shot looked good. He looked like he had a lot of lift in the shot. And, I mean, compared to how his shot used to be, his three-point shot actually looks really good now. And if he can produce these kind of minutes on a regular basis, like he was before he got injured, I mean, he could be the starting shooting guard for a long time if he could be consistent. Um, Patrick McCaw, 20 minutes, didn't do much. Two points, two rebounds, two assists, one of three from the field, no free throw attempts, and 0 of two from the three point line, and one turnover. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 16 minutes, or sorry, 18 minutes, 9.6 rebounds, no assists, three of nine from the field, three of four from the free throw line, and no, uh, he had a three point attempt, but he missed, and he had one steal, one block, two turnovers. Matt Thomas, 16 minutes, he should be getting more sh- shot attempts when he's out there with the second unit. He was passing up a lot of threes tonight, and if you have an open three, shoot it, bro. Like, you, you have, you're one of the Raptors that have the green light to shoot it whenever you want. Because you've been shooting it really well since, you know, playing for the Raptors, so keep that up. 16 minutes, 6 points, 1 rebound, no assist, 2 of 6 from the field. No free throw attempts, 2 of 5 from the three-point line with, um, yeah, nothing else. Empty stats on the defensive end. And Terrence Davis, no points. After having a career night against Charlotte, he drops a goose egg in 12 minutes with five rebounds, one assist, 0-6 from the field, no free throw attempts, and 0-5 from the three-point line with one turnover. And Boucher, a day after his birthday, nine points, or sorry, nine minutes, seven points, three rebounds, one assist, 2-5 from the field, 2-2 from the free throw line, 1-3 from the three-point line, two steals, a block, and a turnover. And Brissette got O'Shea Brissett got three minutes, but did not do absolutely nothing. He he did absolutely nothing this <laughs> tonight. 
But it is what it is. We've had a lot of these heartbreak losses at home. I don't know what it is. It might be the Drake curse. But, um, you know, thank God it didn't hit us when we won the championship. But it feels like it might be the Drake curse. Even though he wasn't in the building tonight, his homies were. And, um, yeah, we got to figure out a way to bounce back. We have a we have a weird schedule coming up the next few games, but our next game is going to be against OKC on Wednesday night, and we owe them a ball game. We owe them a loss because they beat us at home. That was another tough loss we had that we lost by one point. Um, yeah, I think the last three losses we've had at home, the OKC Thunder, Portland Trailblazers, and... Tonight against the Spurs. Those are all tough losses. Just by a point or two. So OKC Thunder is on Wednesday night. Um, Yeah. OKC Thunder. It's in OKC. And then we got Washington on the 17th. And that's a back. And then we have a back-to-back against Minnesota in Minnesota. And then two days later, we travel back to Atlanta for a game on Martin Luther King Day. And that's an early 2.30 p.m. game. But if you guys enjoyed the podcast, leave a like, support your boy, show him that love. Show me that love. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, only if you want to. But support your boy, and we shall see you back here for the next post-game podcast. After we get the W against OKC. I guarantee it. But till then, stay blessed. Stay woke and peace.